Good evening, visitors. Welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last post ceremony. My name is Nathan Boyd, and joining us today from the Royal Australian Navy is Petty Officer Benjamin Hale. Today's last post ceremony tells the story of a Torres Strait Islander soldier as part of National Reconciliation Week, which runs from the 27th of May through to the 3rd of June. These two dates mark important milestones in Australia's journey to reconciliation. On the 27th of May, 1967, the Australian public voted overwhelmingly to change the constitution to include Aboriginal people in the census and to allow the Commonwealth to create laws for them. On the 3rd of June, 1992, the High Court of Australia made the historic Mabo decision, which acknowledges Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people's unique connection with the land. In commemorating the service of Private Peniatha Warrior, we recognise those Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander services, servicemen and women who played their part in walking the path to reconciliation. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have served in every conflict and commitment involving Australian defence contingents since Federation, including both world wars. They came from sections of society with few rights, low wages and poor living conditions. But once in their AIF, they were treated as equals, paid the same as other soldiers, and generally accepted without prejudice. Despite their courage and commitment to fighting for a nation that afforded them second-class status, most came back to the same discrimination as before. By telling their stories, we hope to come to an understanding of the depths of their sacrifice and dedication, which will in no small way illuminate the path to reconciliation. A shared history of service and commitment will unite, not divide. We commemorate the service of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and Reconciliation Week and the milestone by which it is defined we ask all Australians to be part of the next big steps in our nation's reconciliation journey. We warmly welcome the family of Private Peniatha Waria, who are watching the live stream of this evening's ceremony in the Torres Strait Islands. We also welcome Elder Auntie Linda George, who is in attendance this evening. This evening, we are honoured to acknowledge General Angus Campbell, Chief of the Defence Force. Representatives from the ACT Torres Strait Islanders Corporation and delegation representing Defence in Indigenous Affairs. We warmly welcome the veterans who have served, those that are still serving, and the families that love and support them. We acknowledge the members of RSL and Services Club Association, RSL Victoria, and RSL Queensland, who are watching the broadcast of this ceremony across Australia. During this evening's ceremony, wreaths will be laid by the base of the pool of reflection, by visitors to the memorial, and students on behalf of St Mary's Catholic Primary School, George's Hill, New South Wales. If you're able, please stand and join in singing the national anthem.
If you're able, please be seated. The Australian War Memorial was a vision of Charles Bean, Australia's First World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and stayed with them at the front through to the end of the war. The idea of this national memorial and museum came to him at Poziers, France, in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where family and friends could mourn loved ones buried in faraway places. It would also be a place that could help all Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision, to which we remain true, is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance of the Memorials Gallery. Here is their spirit in the heart of the land they loved, and here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight, we will read the story behind just one of those on the Roll of Honour, which lists the names of more than 102,000 men and women who gave their lives for us in war and in operation for more than a century. But first, we present a lament, Flowers of the Forest. Wreaths of floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection.
Today we remember and pay tribute to Private Penny Arthur Warrior. Penny Arthur Warrior was born on the 1st of November 1919 on the Torres Strait Island of Masik, commonly known as York Island. A proud Kulkogal, he was the youngest of three children born to Wabu Warrior and Mespa Warrior. At the outbreak of the Second World War, he was working as a seaman, renowned for the navigational skills and knowledge of the Torres Strait Island, many men of the island worked in the commercial fishing and pearling industry. From the early days of the war, the possibility of conflict in the Pacific posed a major problem for Australia's regional security. Seeking to protect Australia's northern interests, in May 1941, an independent company of men was established to protect the Torres Strait Islands. This company, later became known as the Torres Strait Island Light Infantry Battalion. Many local men immediately volunteered to join the battalion, demonstrating their commitment to defending country, seeing it as their duty to protect their island home. The battalion quickly gained hundreds of recruits. Japan's entry into the war in December 1941 brought a threat to Australia's doorstep. Throughout 1942, the situation in the Pacific rapidly deteriorated as Japanese forces swept through the region and island nations began to fall. Along with this increased threat, more Torres Strait men volunteered to serve between July and November. Among them was Penny Arthur Warrior, who enlisted on the 25th of October 1942, alongside his older brother, Langley. The brothers were assigned to A Company and were quickly trained for their new defensive role. By late 1942, the response from the men of the Torres Strait was such that the, the unit was able to expand, expand to a full battalion. Over the course of the war, almost every eligible Torres Strait man enlisted for service in the local battalion. One intelligence report noted, the islanders are fit, strong looking, they look fine and savage in uniform. They are keen as mustard and can give us lessons in drilling and marching. I would rather fight with them than against them. The men of the only wholly indigenous battalion formed by the Australian Army, served on the islands of the Torres Strait alongside thousands of other Allied servicemen. With companies spread across the Torres Strait at Horn Island, Goode Island, York Island, and Thursday Island. The men of the battalion were instrumental in the defense of vital infrastructure, including airfields on the island, and were heavily involved in activities to increase the region's security. This was achieved by digging trenches and constructing defensive posts, sandbagging, guard duties, reconnaissance, and continued tactical training exercises. During this time, the battalion often suffered from outbreaks of illness and disease as a result of personnel serving closely together. In June 1943, Private Warrior became ill showing signs of respiratory problems. He was transferred to Thursday Island for treatment at the 6th Australian Camp Hospital, where it was discovered that he had contracted tuberculosis, a highly contagious and often deadly disease. Warrior remained in hospital for several months. His condition gradually worsened until he succumbed to the disease on the 16th of October 1943. His unit went on to serve in parts of New Guinea, as well as continuing the defence of the Torres Strait, earning a reputation as brave and fearsome soldiers. The unit was also responsible for championing pay equality for First Nations people who served in the defence of Australia. 
Following his death, Private Warrior's remains were returned to his home island. He lives at York Island Cemetery, beneath the inscription chosen by his family. He laid down his life for his country until the morn breaks. Private Penny Arthur Warrior was 24 years old. His name is listed on the Roll of Honour on my left, amongst almost 40,000 Australian who died while serving in the Second World War. A photo of his headstone is displayed today beside the Pool of Reflection. This is but one of the many stories of service and sacrifice told here at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember Private Penny Arthur Warrior, who gave his life for us, for our freedoms, and in the hope of a better world. Please stand for the reading of the ode and the sounding of the last post. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Lest we forget. Lest we forget. We leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many a man lying out there at Pozier or in the low scrub of Gallipoli with his poor, tired senses barely working through the fever of his brain has thought in his last moments, well, well, it's over. But in Australia, they will be proud of this. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, that concludes the last post ceremony. On behalf of the director and staff, thank you for visiting the Australian War Memorial today and for your continued support of the Memorial's development project. We wish you all a very pleasant evening.